Today we will be explaining the Paleozoic period, a period that was 541 to 252 million years ago. To set a timeline, this period started from the Cambrian explosion and ranges till the Permian times. Looking at the world, at the beginning of the Paleozoic times, land masses formed what was called Gondwana, a supercontinent which extended from the northern tropics to the southern polar regions. Over time, Gondwana began to move, and by the end of the Paleozoic, continued tectonic plate movements created the supercontinent of Pangaea. These tectonic plate movements actually created mountain chains, specifically the Appalachians, the Ural Mountains, and the mountains of Tasmania. The climate at this time had cold weather and glaciers near the South Pole and was warmer near the equator. Because of the continental masses that were shifting around, large temperature fluctuations were occurring. Overall, the climate got warmer as time progressed. Now, if you happen to go back to the Paleozoic, you might see some of these guys. There were trilobites, chronoids, ichthyostegas, brachiopods, which are still around, placodermi, which were big armor-plated fish, dimetrodons, ostracoderms, this one kind of looks like it's watching you, Wixias, Eurypterids, Apobenias, this thing looks like it has an easy name to pronounce, but I can't pronounce it, Picaeas, Anomalacaris, so they look cool, I mean, like, look at that little guy, uh, our beloved Tiktaalik, Hallucigenia, Conodonts, which is a jawless email made of nightmare fuel, and Therapsids. During this time, life flourished in the seas immensely. Especially during the Cambrian period, the seas came alive. This period set the precedent for complex marine ecosystems to come moving forward. The Orbidician period is when marine diversification occurred, with the debut of jawfish, for example, as well as the dawn of the first substantial animal plankton populations. This new addition greatly altered marine food webs, serving as an abundant food source, as well as having a role in the biogeochemical cycles, overall affecting the productivity and stability of marine ecosystems. But most of these animals aren't around anymore because of mass extinctions. Therefore, lots of the marine species that once existed during this time do not exist anymore. A mass extinction is an event when species face extinction at a much faster rate than they are replaced. The largest mass extinction in our world's history that we know of is the Permian mass extinction, which happened 250 million years ago and killed off 96% of the marine species. In terms of mass extinctions, this one happened quickly, lasting no more than 200,000 years. There was a period of extreme volcano activity which caused the climate to warm and dumped a lot of CO2 into the atmosphere. Super hot temperatures increased the ocean temperature and a lot of CO2 dissolved in water leads to the acidification and warming of the oceans, a recipe for marine animal extinction. 70% of all vertebrate species also went extinct at this time. However, mass extinctions can also have benefits, as horrible as that may sound. This benefit is known as adaptive radiation, the diversification of a group of organisms into different forms that fill ecological niches. Some examples of this during the Paleozoic era are the transarctic invasion of mollusks from the North Pacific to the North Atlantic 350 million years ago. This increased the biodiversity in the North Atlantic region as 265 species invaded the Atlantic. There was also the invasion of green plants, insects, and amphibians, which increased the overall biodiversity beginning at 470 million years ago. The volcanic action in Siberia also helped increase the range of adaptive radiation, along with the evolution of more effective photosynthesis, skeleton-destroying predators, and well-armored prey. And, fortunately, we are lucky enough to have fossil evidence from this period. As mentioned before, our beloved Tiktaalik helped uncover a lot of the mysteries of how humans evolved when it was discovered. And I'm sure you'll see a fossilized trilobite if you visit any natural history museum. We have a lot of trilobites. There were so many. They were the cockroaches of the ocean. We also have coral and brachiopods, fish, and all sorts of other prehistoric animals that lived during this time. 
But at the end of the Permian mass extinction, the Paleozoic came to an end and the era of the Mesozoic began.